Okay, reptiles. We're going to do reptiles tonight, and then next week we're going to do birds and mammals. Um, reptiles. Does everybody believe in evolution? This makes it a little bit different before I have to. Everybody's okay with evolution? Um, not that you can be a creationist, you can still believe in whatever deal you believe in, okay, but everybody's okay with evolution? Makes it a little easier than last time. Um, reptiles. And to a certain extent, the amphibians. Oh, this one's a good pin, Stephen. <laughs> Whoa, yeah, this is a Pink Floyd concert. Um, Reptiles. Uh, the thing that made reptiles successful when they evolved was they developed what was known as the land egg. Um, amphibians, uh, salamanders, frogs, toads, basically have a non-shelled egg that's kind of like a gelatinous mess, okay, a mash, mess. Uh, if you ever see a, where frogs have laid in the pond or something, it looks like just a big packet of kind of eggs without a shell, all right? That means that the amphibians always have to be tied to water. Even toads, even toads that are found in the desert, have to be in some uh, moist state as part of their life in order for them to lay eggs and the eggs to hatch and they continue making babies and, you know, the next generation, all that stuff. All right? With reptiles, what reptiles developed was they developed a shell over their egg. So that meant that they didn't have to be tied to the water anymore. So they're like the desert tortoises can actually live in the real desert. And some of the desert tortoises, some of the desert lizards, probably in their lifetime don't ever drink water. They get the moisture from the plants or the, or the bugs that they eat, okay, or the uh, little mammals they eat. Whatever they eat, they get their moisture from that. So it's distinctly possible that, that you know, they see the, the rain shower once a year or something, and they, they don't really have to have the water from it. By not having, by having that egg that's a self-contained unit, it doesn't dry out. That means they could live anywhere. And reptiles are found on every continent except Antarctica. There are actually reptile, there are actually snakes and some, there's a frog that, a species that's found really close to the Arctic Circle. But there's nothing found on Antarctica except penguins, pretty much. Um, so um, that was important to have that egg. And um, the egg is basically, it's a self-contained unit. Everything that they need to make a new baby crocodile or a new baby snake or whatever is inside that egg. All right? That was a big step. So then they could literally climb out of the oceans and be anywhere. Okay? Um, everybody talks about the Jurassic period as being the age of the di dinosaurs. Actually, the Mesozoic period was more important for the number of reptiles on the, on the face of the Earth. Uh, there were mammals at that time, too, and there were birds in the Jurassic period. But during the Mesozoic period, the predominant species of animal on the, or type of animal on the face of the Earth was reptiles. Okay? And then something happened about 65 to 80 million years ago, whether it's Yellowstone blowing up or Bruce Willis didn't blow up the comet or whatever it was, okay? Something wiped out basically everything on the face of the Earth that was not um, less than about 40 to 50 pounds. And at that time, there were a lot of little mammal species, like lemur-type species. If anybody saw the Disney dinosaur movie, that's this kind of stuff. Those animals managed to uh, evolve and take over the world. Okay, and that was the end of the giant T. Rexes and uh, all those other humongous animals, and the smaller reptiles too. Um, the crocodilians actually managed to survive that because they were in the water. So crocodiles actually date back all the way to the Jurassic period. Okay. Um, there are four orders of reptiles, and we talk about when we talk about orders. We're talking about the uh, classification of them. There are four orders of reptiles. You'd think I would be able to do this off the top of my head. Testudinae, which is the turtles and tortoises, the turts and the torts. Okay. Um, the crocodilians. which includes the crocodiles, the alligators, and the caimans, okay? Uh, the squamata, which contains two sub, or two super orders. Okay. 
man, I may not make it through. This really, this one's really, whew. I'm gonna start seeing colors pretty soon. Uh, the Soria, which are all the, collectively speaking, the lizards. Okay, and then Serpentes, which is the snakes. So that's everything from anacondas to rat snakes to boas to all the stuff that's not taking over the state of Florida. Uh, and then there's one, and I doubt that you guys will ever see them, uh, Rhynchocephalia. There are three species in the Rhynchocephalia, and they are called the Tuataras. They're a really ancient type of lizard uh, that are only found in New Zealand on a couple of the on the main island and a couple three of the other islands, and they're very very primitive. Um, right now, the only zoo in the United States that has them is the St. Louis Zoo, and they're not on display. Uh, they're really valuable. If you ever look at New Zealand, you'll see like some of their stamps and their and some of their currency actually has this picture of this dinosaur-looking lizard. That's the Tuatara. There are some British zoos that have them, and there's some Australian zoos that have them but they're really, really restricted. And uh, St. Louis Zoo's got like six or eight of them, and I've seen one uh, when I was working at the St. Louis Zoo. Uh, so chances are you'll never see them. They're really, it takes like two years for the eggs to hatch. Uh, they come from a really temperate climate up in the mountains. They're really interesting animals, but they're, um, they're just not seen a lot, okay? They have, you okay? I need to get closer. Oh, okay. Over here. Okay, over here. You're going to cross across the camera now, remember. So smile. Is that okay over there? You went over there. You went by the clown with the camera. That works. Um, they have what's called, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen an iguana. The iguanas have like these spots in the middle of their heads. Okay, those are called parietal um, eyes. And it's, a, it's an ancient throwback. Uh, that was once a sensory organ, and the, the uh, tuatars are so well developed that they actually think they can probably see motion with it, maybe pick out shapes. They wouldn't be able to pick out like individuals, but um, it's really they're really cool animals. But I doubt very seriously any of you will ever get a chance to see them because they're so rare. Um, okay, the testudines, the turtles and tortoises. There's about 300 different, 330 different species. They're always discovering new reptile species, they found, and actually amphibian species. They just found a new bird the other day. Um, and um, not too long ago, they, they had another turtle species that showed up in a zoo someplace, but they didn't even realize that what it, what it was. It's been there for like 20 years, and nobody knew it was a new species. Um, turtles and tortoises. Now, turtles, collectively, this is kind of a, making it easy. Turtles pretty much are in the water, and tortoises are pretty much on land. Okay, uh, terrapins are kind of like the things that go between, uh, and box turtles are kind of like tortoises that live in really wet places. So, um, that, but basically think of it, turtles are the ones that are in water and tortoises are on land. That's the easiest way to remember it, okay? Um, the collectively, they all have the hard shell. Even the soft shell tortoises, or turtles, that, tortoise, tortoise, turtles that we have here in Florida, that leathery shell that they have underneath it, there's a hard shell. So all turtles and tortoises have a shell. And when you think about them, when you look at their anatomy, basically they're an upside down soup bowl with organs. Because the shell is a big dome. There's a lot of fat, there's some other tissues in there, but it basically acts as a storage unit for, for food and water in the fat, and it acts as insulation. Now that's really important when, you're, when you've got a sick turtle or tortoise because they heat from the top down. All their organs are on their belly, basically. And then they got this big insulated dome over the top. So when they're sick and you want to keep them warm, a heating pad is not the best way to warm them. The best way to warm them is from the top down. So, you know, like we were warming french fries at McDonald's, okay? Uh, that kind of a, an idea because you warm up all that insulation and it keeps everything else warm. If you warm them from the bottom up, then once the organs lose the heat, then there's no insulation and they can get sick from respiratory infections and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, they have a, a, a thicker skin, a dermal type skin. Okay. Uh, but the big thing to remember is the shell. They're found in the water, they're found in land, and they're found in the deserts. 
They can, the, some of the desert tortoises literally live in some of the most hostile deserts on the face of the earth. And they're fine. They're mobile homes. Okay, the squamata. There are about 3,000 species of squamata. Oh. 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 Just over the line. Um, and that's about evenly divided between the snakes and the lizards and geckos and um, help me here, um, eyeless lizards and iguanas and yada, yada, yada. Um, the uh, soria, which is, are collectively the lizards, again, have that hard, scaly skin. They do not have teeth that are removable. Their teeth are not in, jaw, in, in sockets like ours. You can't pull a, uh, an iguana's tooth. Their teeth are basically like a file. It's like a rasp. It's a, it gets connected to the bone. Tortoises don't have teeth. They have beaks like parrots do. Okay? They don't have any teeth at all. Um, so basically, what if you look at a lizard's mouth, it's kind of like they've got a file in their mouth. And that's the way their teeth are. Uh, the serpentes, the snakes, actually have removable teeth. You can pull a snake's teeth. And even on like the rattlesnakes, they have replaceable fangs that will pop down in so that they have another fang growing in. Yes? That's a problem because they can get down in their bone and then you have an osteomyelitis, you have a bone problem. So with a, with a snake, if they have bad teeth, you can pull them. But with a reptile, if it gets down in the, with a, a lizard, it gets down into the bone, then you got a, a bone infection. And that can be really, really difficult to deal with. We'll talk about that later. We'll get into that. Yes? I have a question about the Uh, you can actually you can drill holes in them and, and use laparoscopes and stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and there are sometimes you can actually take pieces away and then replace it. There's some different dental techniques. And uh, I used to do a lot of rehab with gopher tortoises that got hit by cars. And there was a lot of different techniques you could do. Um, uh, in fact, my gopher tortoise the, that I've had for 20 years now, one of my friends is using it in school programs. And that's what she had puncture wounds from a dog bite that we had to get healed up. But yeah, you can seal them up and do some things. And then we, for many years, we had a tortoise that was named, a uh, gopher tortoise that was named FM, that uh, when it came in, you could like bend it back and forth like you were gonna crack an egg. I don't know how this tortoise was still alive. And um, we put her back together again with uh, uh, several hundred dollars worth of expensive stainless steel wire and, and screws and pens. And so we called her FM because she could pick up cable signals. Um, <laughs> And she was a wonderful tortoise. And we eventually, everything healed up, and we cut off the, the pins and took the wires out. And just uh, about 10 years later, we let her loose. So you can, you can, it's doable. It's, it's difficult sometimes, but it's doable. Um, OK, so um, legless lizards. Anybody ever seen a legless lizard? OK, it's just exactly what it sounds like. It's a lizard without legs. Um, we have them here in Florida. There's a Siberian species that gets up to about eight feet long. They're big, <laughs> really big. Um, so you look at it, they're, they're lizards that lost their legs is basically what it, and they, so they look like a snake, but they don't look like a snake. Um, there's a couple ways you can tell the difference between a legless lizard and a real snake, okay? Uh, number one, they blink at you. Snakes don't have eyelids. Lizards have eyelids. So if you're staring at this big snake in the backyard and it goes and blinks at you, then you know it's a legless lizard, okay? Yeah. They also, they have ear holes. Now, they may have a little flap that goes over their ear, um, but if you look for it, you can find where they have a hole for their ear. So legless lizards, there goes Tina again. I told her not to drink all that coffee. Um, lizards can hear. Snakes can't. Snakes do not have an external ear opening. They have no hearing apparatus. No matter how much you yell at them, they don't hear you. Yeah, and the whole thing about the cobras, and the, that's all about movement. It's not that the guy's playing the flute that attracts the cobra, all right? Uh, they have the inner ear mechanism so that they, they know how to maintain their balance, but they don't hear, OK? Um, and then, of course, the teeth. A legless lizard, you can't pull their teeth. 
Okay. Uh, the legless lizards also, if you cut them open, they have two lungs. They have basically paired organs. They have two lungs, they have two kidneys, okay? Um, snakes don't. Snakes are, are one long cylinder with long organs. They have one long lung. They have one long kidney. Occasionally, in some of the really large pythons, you'll see a second lung that's kind of scarred down and it's vestigial. It doesn't do anything. And I've, only, I've seen that half a dozen times and only in reticulated pythons were like 18 feet or longer. So it happens, but it, it's of no value. It's just kind of like a, a useless organ to them. All right? Okay, so, all right, we just explained snakes. Okay, no eyelids. They have basically, they have a contact lens over their eye. And that's important when they shed their skin because if they don't shed those, those contact lenses, then they can have eye problems. They can get infections underneath it or they can build up to the point that they can't see properly. All right? Um, they don't hear. No matter how much you yell at them, they don't hear you. Um, their mandibles, their, their lower jaw is attached by ligaments. So that's how the snake opens up its mouth and can swallow the rat that's bigger than its head or kill itself trying to swallow an alligator. Boy, that caused a lot of trouble. Um, and also, not having paired organs means that if you only got one lung and you get pneumonia, there ain't another lung to, to back up that one lung. So that's important. Same thing with their kidneys. Once their kidneys are shot, there isn't a second kidney to, to bail them out. All right? Okay, crocodilians. Depending on how you talk to, there's about 25 to 26 species of crocodiles. Now that includes, there's two species of alligators, there's the Chinese alligator and the American alligator. That includes the species of caimans, which are all South American uh, crocodilians, the spectral caimans, brown caimans, black caimans, yukaris. I'm leaving somebody else out. That's pretty much it. Uh, and then the rest of them are things like saltwater crocodiles, Siamese crocodiles. Uh, the gharials and gavials are the ones with the really long snouts that come from India and Asia. Uh, that eat, pretty much exclusively eat fish and very small things because they have really long snouts. Um, saltwater crocodiles are not necessarily found in the salt water. They are the widest ranging crocodiles. They're from all of the way, found in Southeast Asia all the way down to, South, to Australia. They have the ability to transverse the oceans, but they don't necessarily live in the oceans. Okay? Here in Florida, we have where the only, there's only two places in the world where you find crocodiles and alligators living together, no mass hysteria. Um, and that's here and in China. There's a little alligator species called the Chinese alligator that's critically endangered that's about a third to half the size of our American alligators. And, uh, and they have crocodilian species in, in China. And then here in, in Florida, we have the American crocodile, which gets up to about Tampa Bay and um, mostly down south. And then, of course, the American crocodile is in pretty much every drop of water in the state of Florida. So. And that's a, that's a true conservation success story, because when I first started working in zoos, they were like almost gone. If you had alligators in your zoo, you had something really cool. And now they're all over the place. So um, crocodilians have digits. Lizards have digits. They have fingers, OK? Um, crocodilians have removable teeth. They're in sockets. In fact, they grow back. So if they lose them, they grow back in place. Um, crocodilians, for the most part, are probably the most intelligent of the reptiles. Cobras are pretty smart, but crocodilians are right up there, if not the most important, not not the most intelligent. And we'll talk about that. There's a reason for that. Okay. As far as other reptile characteristics, they have complete skeletons. Um, they have skeletons in their bone, in their arms, in their legs. Uh, even the snakes have remnants of the pelvic girdle, where at one time they had legs. They've just lost the ability for it. Okay. Um, respiration is by the lungs and by also air sacs. And we'll talk about birds having air sacs. The air sacs are kind of like uh, film bags that you find in, in, in the thoracic cavity and the abdominal cavity of reptiles and they can actually have some air exchange. It's not as complex as a lung, but there's some air exchange with them. And in some of the uh, infections, some of the respiratory infections in birds and reptiles, they'll get deep in the air sacs, and they're really, really hard to cure when they're in the air sacs. It's a lot more difficult. 
Um, okay, one of my favorite words. Reptiles have, reptiles and birds too. Oh, I'm going to erase part of your little line there, Stephen. Reptiles and birds have what are called cloacas. And cloaca in Latin means common sewer. Uh, 